Hello guys, it's me again, and I'm back again with another another video. This is the first one in quite a while, but nevertheless, I've still put together a video which I hope you should find enjoyable. Okay, so, okay, so here we are. This thing here. So this is basically what I've got prepared for you during this video. Now, what the hell is this, you might be asking. Well, as you can see, or rather not, might not be able to see, there are two arms. There are two arms here. There is a crank mechanism around here, a few gears, and there's the usual motor arrangement as well. So. Turn that back down, and these two bits in the front, these pads on the front, which are perhaps the most important bit of all, they are. Well, we'll see what they are in a minute. And yeah, here it is. I'm going to give you a demonstration, a brief demonstration now. So. As you can see, operating. Now, currently, it doesn't actually have anything underneath these pads. What we're going to do is we're going to put sticky substances like, um, like soap and glue and possibly molten chocolate as well, if I can get that sorted, under these things. And as this turns around here, the crank mechanism goes up and down. These arms move up and down. We've got the crank bit here. Speed up a little bit. This goes up and down. The intern moves these arms up and down alternately. And at the other end of the arms, you have this bit down here, which to whatever it is under there. Now, I haven't actually tried this in practice yet, but I think it'll either work very well or it won't work at all. Just like many of the things I think we make now. Part of, part of the reason why it has this double arm mechanism is so that the end bit here, as it moves up and down, it can stay level at the same angle, which is for, which is why we have these double arms because they kind of angle it up correctly. Probably a technical term for that, just I can't think of it on the top of my head at this present moment. The gears, of course, are quite greasy as usual. That is intentional so that they don't make too much noise. Okay, first things first. Hmm. This shower gel smells nice, but put a damn of it under there. Ooh. I think we're working particularly well at the moment. So what I'll bring you bring you a little bit closer. Okay, so you should have a closer view now. These particular ones don't seem to be making an awful lot of sound, which is a, a bit of a disappointment, but you know what? Get rid of that. <coughs> Move that one up as well. Yeah. I knew this video was going to get a bit messy, but it didn't worry. Here we have some. Now, this is in fact jelly. Hmm. See if we can get that under there. 
And when I designed this machine, I never had the idea that I'd be putting large trays of jelly underneath it, but there we go. Get under there, you stupid thing. This jelly is only half set, but anyway, that's kind of a good thing because it makes it a bit more squidgly digitally. Not that that makes any sense, but here we go. Although the sounds from this machine don't seem to be much to go by, the visual aspect does seem to be something. Although I originally intended this as a sound making machine, the visual aspect seems to be much more effective than what the sounds are, so... Like what? So... To any of you who have watched, um, you know, those satisfying sounds videos, not, well, not satisfying sounds, but things like sand being cut and things other being various things being sliced and cut in a really kind of smooth way and that's kind of what this is but with yeah I don't think I'll be eating that jelly afterwards because not only has it been contaminated with the shower gel and other bits and pieces but this container has been used for many things over its time and has not been washed since. Check that my camera is still running. Enough of that. Now the challenge is to get this out from underneath here. Oh, what? Glue. Let's try some glue. There we go. There we go. as the glue kind of unsticks and too much glue on that side let's say oh no, I'm going to quite carefully pour some of this on top now this is pretty standard just washing up liquid green stuff stuff's usually pretty easy to clean, it looks messy now, but it'll be fine in a couple of minutes once I've cleaned it. Slate clean. <laughs> this next little bit, we're going to do something 
I'm not going to be using this, or at least not for the time being. We're going to be using this, and this, two of these, and one of these. The things first. We need to take them out of the wrapper. Now, chocolate on its own is pretty hard stuff. But in order for us to use it in the so called squelching machine, we can have to warm it up. So, there you go, a melting moment. Now, when they decided to name their chocolates melting moments, I'm sure they didn't mean on the workbench with a heat gun like what I'm about to do now. Let's hope this works. Oh, look, they're melting already. So after a bit of a while um, heat gunning these things, um, they are now, as you can see, lovely and melted. In fact, might actually we actually kind of overdid it a little bit with that one, but they are melted and, and most importantly gooey nonetheless. Much mm, So I tell myself I shouldn't be eating the stuff I've bought for the video. I bought these for the video, not for me. Let me help myself with that. Oh, here we go. Don't mind if I do. And switch on the power. Doesn't really seem squelchy and squidgy enough, but what I'm going to do is this. Oh, I think that's enough of the heat gun, or what I call, for the sake of this video, the squelchifying machine because it makes things all sticky and gooey when it heats them up and melts them. Ooh. Using a plastic part here was a very bad idea. When you're blasting it with 300 degrees of hot air, it doesn't take kindly. I think that's about all we're going to get with the chocolate for today. And off. Oh. Get rid of this filthy mess. Turn that over there. Get rid of that, which is now quite messy. And drop that over there. Mm. Well. To say I found that video experimental would be a big understatement. It's probably my most experimental video to date, and I know I say that about every single video I've ever done, but it seems to be the truth. Um, in the past year or so on YouTube, and especially within the ASMR community, I have noticed, well, a growing trend of videos that contain satisfying sounds and satisfying actions, which is something that I've essentially tried to do in this video and something that I tried to do in my previous video as well. Um, and yeah, also seeing as it's coming up to Christmas, I did actually try to buy some mince pies. And what I, what I did plan to do was to heat them up 
so that the mixture inside goes all squelchy and squishy and I was planning to put that into the machine as well but then I thought that no matter how much you heat mince pies they don't go squishy and squelchy enough um, you can heat them up to the point of burning and they still won't do that but anyway anyway seeing as it's Christmas in a couple of days um, I wish you guys the best Christmas possible and also I myself and another fellow ASM artist have got an extra special collaboration coming out for you guys in a few days so so I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you enjoy Christmas as well thanks guys much love and take care bye bye